beautiful ones, welcome to The Wellington Witch. My name's Lorian and I'm bringing you your next decade reading. This is going to be interesting. I'm already got some feelings from it. So welcome back to the channel if you are, you know, returning subscriber. If you are new, welcome. I hope this gives you lots of information that you want to hear about the next decade. First things first, I have a new deck. I have the John Holland Tarot. So this is going to be really interesting to see kind of what information comes up for you with that deck. I've seen a few tarot readers use it before. I really connected with it when I was watching the videos. And I hope that you also connect with it when you're watching this one. I have had to play around with it. I've got to know it a little bit and hopefully we'll get some really good messages from it. I've shuffled it several times. So if there are some like sequence um, cards going like one, two, three, that's definitely meant for you because I've shuffled them about 20 times since I got them for Christmas. Um, but without further ado, let's have a look and see what's coming up for your decade. So we have here group one and group one is a blue lace agate. I know some people call it agate, but I call it agate. This is red jasper. This one here is a one that I can't remember. It begins with C. But I can't quite remember what it is called. Um, it's purple. It's very good for psychic intuition. The red jasper, by the way, is very good to do with your root chakra and very grounding. The blue lace agate is very much to do with your communication. And then my favourite little bradorite is just like a, an aurora borealis captured in a stone. And it's really good for your third eye chakra as well. So we have group one, group two, group three, group four. I will be drawing clarifiers as we go along, as I always do, just in case they don't encapsulate everything that the message has. I'm also going to be looking into your romance with some romance angels, and I'm just going to be seeing kind of what information comes through for your career. But ultimately, the next decade, the themes, what it holds, what could come about for you. I know it spans a massive 10 years, but that's what's interesting for me. That's what's, you know, I get a kind of thrill thinking about what the next 10 years holds because so much has happened for me personally over the last 10 years. And I'm sure it has for you guys too, but we're now starting afresh. This is something that we can really go forth. We can claim the next 10 years, like this is gonna be amazing and actually dedicate some change. Astrology wise, 2020 may not be as different as 2019. However, my trusted astrology sources tell me that 2021 to 24 seem pretty good. So try in 2020 just to see what's coming up for you and just to kind of level down. But this, this holds all the information as to what's coming through for you in the next decade. So fingers crossed it's good and let's get into the reading. Okay, group one, you would have chosen the blue lace agate. So let's have a look. I'm going to start with the John Holland Tarot, like I said at the beginning. Um, this is basically, I have done some readings, I've shuffled a lot with them. So if you do have a sequence, then that means that it is definitely in tune for you. So let's just have a look and see. <laughs> okay, so just as I was saying, you have three, four and five. So you have fertility, which is normally the Empress. You have the Emperor, which, well, authority, which is normally the Emperor. And number five, which is normally the Hierophant. I'm just going to move this slightly here so you may be able to view it a little bit better. So this comes forward with a great understanding of how you're going to grow over the next decade. And I actually see this going into the next five years, to be honest with you. It feels very much like there's... Um, Oh, they're struggling already to get encapsulate 10 years into a few words. Um, I feel you're starting to grow something amazing. Now, for those of you who are looking to start a family, I will see that happening for you. I do see that happening. Um, however, the family comes to you will be very individual. So it could be through adoption or it could be through marrying into another family um, and kind of adopting their kids. So it could be that you are actually going into a big family or joining your big family um, with somebody else's. It could be that you are kind of becoming the head of the family here because I do see 
obviously as the years go by we all get wiser hopefully <laughs> can't speak for myself um but yeah with these two there is definitely a union coming in for you in this next decade so I do like I say I do feel it's in the next five years and I do feel that there's going to be something very intense between you um but it's kind of complimentary because you have the fertility you have the intuition of this very central figure in number three and then in number four you have the authority you have this very practical down-to-earth manifestation within that card there as well so I do feel something is going to be very intense within that union and also something that just feels meant to be but like I say there's going to be some there's going to be some family bonding going on in the next five years and by that I mean lots and lots of interactions with this other person's family and maybe with yours um but it is definitely the first thing they showed me was children family building um so if that's not something that you want it doesn't necessarily mean that you're literally going to be having kids and stuff like that but they could have a very big family they you know somebody really really close to you who feels like a partner almost has a really big family and I do feel that you possibly will marry into that or become part of that family you're going to be very integral to their structure here and I think mainly I mean of course we all get wiser as we get older hopefully we don't repeat the same mistakes um but with the wisdom card you know the hierophant normally it means people coming to you for your hard-earned understanding you know your hard-earned almost like war medals of relationships life in general career your understanding of the world so you could find yourself at the center of something here you could be um taking up a different career even you could actually be offering your services to other people as a counsellor as somebody people go to in their time of need as somebody people look to you know like a grandma or a granddad you know the younger generations tend to look to them for hope or from advice or just for some love you know when their parents may be getting a little bit too stressed on them so that I think is where your bonds are going to come in so not necessarily you're going to become a grandparent um, but definitely a feeling as you get older you're going to see younger generations you're going to see people who may be younger than you who are friends like two or three years you're going to see people come to you with this sense of please let me know what I'm doing wrong in this relationship let me know what I'm doing that is oh, how do I put it um that is wrong you know what am I doing wrong how can I make a better life for myself that's where you get this card here. This is definitely a wisdom, a time of wisdom for you. You're going to go through some lessons. I'm not thinking that this is going to be hard won lessons. Definitely not the case, but it does feel a lot like there's um, you growing, learning, understanding, fitting the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that is life together. You're going to see the outcome here. Now, it's kind of like, so for some reason, this has just come to my head. When I first started doing tarot readings, I used to have a cheat sheet on the walls and, you know, I'd reference them sometimes or, I'd, you know, look up the meaning in the books, which I still sometimes do. I'm not saying that I don't do that anymore, but it's just a case of keeping on reflecting things. And over time, you kind of assimilate the information into your brain, obviously. So it's kind of, you understand the nuances of how you interact with the cards the world situations people so that could be how you're doing it this time I've, i just realized i still have a plaster on my finger sorry about that <laughs> that's the injury over christmas um but there's just a feeling of you actually understanding how this bigger picture comes together how this kind of feels how this develops how this encapsulates you and how you interact with it not what you can do for the world but also how you interact with the world it's something that feels like you're finding your place in the next decade which I actually really enjoy the sound of for you guys so the moon card which is kind of like when you feel very strong is the mutable moon so nothing is set in stone I think this is a message a lot of us need to hear I actually had a client ask me this recently as to um trying to not paraphrase them 
is there something that I do? You know, you read for me, but then if I go out and do something different, will the cards not change? The answer is yes, the cards will change. So if I say, the cards are advising you to say no to this situation, and if you say no to the situation, this will happen and this will grow for you. If you then turn around and say yes to the situation, yes, the outcome will change. Obviously it will, because you've done something different than what the tarot cards advised. So they will then change according to your decisions. Nothing is set in stone. Even these, you know, if you don't want a family, if you don't want to be the wise old person when somebody comes along and says, hello, can I have your time and advice, please? You don't have to do that. But these are what the tarot cards are saying that they desire for you. They desire you to be this person. And it's not for any ulterior motive either. It's not for anything that they are, you know, coming forwards and saying, you know what, I think that you should do this and if you don't do it, you're screwed. That's not how tarot works. That's absolutely not how tarot works. Tarot just goes into the collective energy that you're putting out into the universe right now, seeing how you will evolve or the predicting how you will evolve over the next few years into the next decade and seeing the themes that are currently coming towards you based on the frequency that you have right now. So if this is, remains something that you want, if this family, if something about becoming wise, becoming something is something that you want, this is advising you or encouraging you to step into that energy and continue on the path that you already got. If this is something that you kind of, I don't know about family, I don't know whether I want kids, I don't want, mm, eh, I don't know, then you don't have to, but it's just a case of this may be something that you want, but you don't actually know it yet. So this is just kind of saying nothing is set in stone. What you do today, the consequences may not come around for years. You know what I mean? So text message you send. You don't know what chain reaction that's going to send, set off. So it's just kind of saying nothing set in stone. You can always make decisions. You can always change your path. But it's a case of just experiencing it, exploring it. And again, figuring out the pieces to the jigsaw puzzle wherever you can. So as for romance and relationships, what if you have here? Okay, so this is great advice for anybody, really. Um, but this is give your relationship a chance and make the effort. So maybe there's, um, ooh, speaking to myself here. <laughs> so it's maybe it's a case of you having to not give up very easily if somebody is annoying you or if somebody is really bothering you, you don't just go, oh, for God's sake, and then leave it alone. If somebody's challenging, if somebody is, um, I don't know, if somebody really, really, really annoys you to the point where, you know, the habits and stuff, just you know, work on your partnership. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. So it's just kind of saying, I don't know. Okay, so actually for some of you, this relates to you seeing the person go, I don't have a chance. You know, like, oh, I no, there's not absolutely no chance. Or I have to have no chance with them. Or it's just going to end in tears anyway, so why bother? For some of you, you're already defeatist when it comes to relationships and... I've been there and done that as well. So it's kind of a thing where <laughs> I'm currently the wisdom person. Um, but it's kind of the position where, you know, if you want to give your relationship as a chance, if you want to see where you can lead it over the next decade, it's just, I think this is what you're going to be learning. You're going to be learning where to make the effort and how. And so if you see somebody, you feel, oh, wow, there's a great kinship here. But then something that doesn't quite fit your vision of, oh, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult to describe. If you see somebody who doesn't fit your vision of the ideal person, if your current partner is just starting to annoy you with the habits and stuff, make the effort just to give your relationship a chance. Do something with it. Take the leap. Take the risk of doing something with it and continuing. I'm not saying to give it everything. Um, <laughs> certainly not. I'm not saying to give this relationship everything and ignore any warning signs. But do take your own kind of intuition on board here and do see if there are any challenges you can overcome. Because I don't think, nothing's set in stone. You know, you may think, oh, this is already off the wall. This is already ending. I'm going to be two years in love with you and then you're going to cheat on me. And then that's the kind of defeatist sort of thing that comes through here. So you don't want to do that. You want to understand there's a natural flow into wisdom and, you know, give things a chance. Don't say no immediately. 
I'm not saying go with people who are definitely below you or to compromise on things that will put you in harm's way but definitely use your intuition to learn when to say yes and when to say no. I'm just going to grab these here. So, mm. so you have the Ace of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. So the Ace of Swords is very much about new beginnings and victory. I call it the Sword of Truth as well. So if you speak your truth to somebody and they don't like it, then you know you haven't really truly lost. You know, you haven't really truly said something. So you're going to be using this your sword of truth as something that carries you over the next decade you're going to be utilizing this very much <laughs> and you know if something doesn't work out whoosh, draw a line under it or cut the knot off or something carry on so it's just kind of this feeling of setting forwards on a new journey every so often you know you're not going to be above cutting things off or cutting someone off in order to benefit yourself which could be to do with the queen of pentacles here she's not as ruthless as the queen of swords but she's definitely more practical so if it benefits you you're probably going to be letting some friendships go you're going to be letting some things go kind of a slytherin energy <laughs> for those of you who are familiar with harry potter um, but the Queen of Pentacles is also about having that work ethic, being a homemaker, but not necessarily the typical view of it. You know, like people say a homemaker and, oh, at home with the kids, with a cardigan on and doing all this. And that's not necessarily the thing that's going on here. It's she's home improvements. She's head matriarch. She's somebody who's very practical. And again, somebody who could go forwards for advice. So I feel like this is definitely coming to a very strong position for you you seem to be growing up well just growing up and you seem to be understanding the phases of the life that is coming through for you over the next decade apologies dear ones as you may know there has been some technical issues lately and i'm doing all my readings on my phone um because and the PC is in the shop, which is being fixed. It has been for three weeks now. So I do apologize if there is a glitch there. It's simply because my phone ran out of space and didn't tell me it was going to. So <laughs> this is now the next day, um, but I'm still in tune into your reading, into your energies as to what's coming through. And um, basically, we're going to start seeing what's coming in for you. I have re-watched the last video I did for you until this point. And um, yeah, we're just going to carry on and see what happens through here. Now, one thing that I wanted to do in very particular was see what's coming through for you with your money, with your career in particular. Because this is a lot to do with love, a lot to do with your emotions and your finances in regards to, you know, making headway and maybe home improvements but I did want to look at your career as well so I have got the Taramuka here just to see what information comes up for you shuffling off camera because it's quite difficult to shuffle on and then we go I haven't taken all of them from the top some came from the middle as well. So the four of pentacles, you have this as part of your career. So you may be wanting to hold on to something that's very steady, something that seems like a sure thing. We also have the queen of cups. Now the queen of cups comes in whenever there's a need for intuition. So we know from the facility that you are gonna have that intuition. But I think what it's trying to say, actually in looking, you know what I was saying, nothing set in stone. Maybe there's a tendency to hold on to what feels secure, but it isn't actually secure. You know what I mean? You know, um, no job is 100% secure. That's just the reality of life, unfortunately. Um, you may have interruptions. The department may change. Even if you're self-employed, you may decide to do something different. So it's just understanding the intuitive cues over the next 10 years. Again, maybe even the next few just to start to fine tune they keep showing me this fine what's it what they're called um tuning forks and you're kind of ringing it to see what it is that is actually ringing back to you if you're on the right note so to speak then we have the hierophant so there could be a tradition that isn't yeah it could be a tradition that isn't serving you very well or this could be something that you're actually seeking over the next years of your life you could be seeking tradition you could be seeking a different process I feel like some of you not all of you 
you're going to change religion. Now, this could already be happening, um, but I do feel you could be changing religion, and this could be to do with your career move as well. So, for instance, you could go from gambling services and making loads of money, computer programming or something like that, and shift into environmental services and um, agriculture and stuff like that. So it could be a very vast change. So in that way, your religion or your way of life could change dramatically as well. You could decide to become vegetarian or you could decide to do something different and take up a different sport. But it feels like it's linked to your career somehow. I feel like your change of lifestyle will also change the type of career that you want and vice versa. Your career will change your lifestyle. So I do feel this is coming up for you and I do feel it's something you desperately want. It's something that you have asked the universe for and it's coming in now. It is something that is giving you the leg up, so to speak, to say, well, you've asked for this. So here you go. This is something that you can have now. And then you have the five of cups. Now this to me is telling you that you don't have to you know, grieve for things that long. Things are still going to be okay. Even though you have maybe a, an occasional hiccup over the next decade, if you have an occasional oopsie, didn't mean to do that, you don't necessarily have to, um, how to put it, you don't necessarily have to focus your energies on what you've lost. Focus your energies on what you have received, gained, done. Like in 2019, a lot of people said, I didn't really do much. You know, a lot of people were saying that they didn't really feel like they'd achieved all that much. And I'm here to say, you have achieved absolutely what you were meant to achieve. You have achieved everything that you could possibly do. And I think if you look back at the lessons over the last few years even, you would know that you have come a great deal further than where you started. This is the same for the next 10 years. If you look at the place that you're in now, January 1st, 2020, 2020 just chart your progress like a little map and see all the successes that you've had, even minor ones, and how far you've learned about yourself and how much you overcome in order to get to the state you are in now. And I truly believe this is going to be something that you can take on board and you can truly incorporate in your daily life. Your career, I feel, is going to change. And I feel like the way that you interact with your job, the way you interact with your colleagues, that's going to change too because I do see you shifting. I don't know whether you're going to be working on your own more often, but I do see more solitary, yeah, more solitary understanding, work behind the scenes. I also feel like it's going to be quite a good deal of introspection, so wondering whether you're doing this right and that right, and just kind of having a little mental check-in every now and again, whenever your boss may annoy you, or whenever a client annoys you, you're going to be like, okay, so let's just do a check-in. How do I feel about this? Am I still happy about it, or am I just unhappy because of such and such? And just see whether you're still doing the right thing for you. But I see growth. I see major change, fundamental change. You're going to be changing something that you normally I think would have felt a guaranteed thing but it's not there could be a Scorpio Pisces or Cancerian coming into your life to guide you within your career even and she is normally somebody to do with um creativity and maybe nursing maybe healing counseling listening psychology you could even be going back to school because the emperor is also about school um, so you may be taking a course in something just to add to your list of skills in order to take you forwards in your career. So this could be something as well that enables you to see where your relationships need to give a, you know, give a little bit of leeway and where you need to make the effort in other sides. So it could be psychology that you're looking at as yourself. It could also be that you start going to therapy or you start going to a certain meditation class just something i see self-improvement here self-improvement over the next 10 years is definitely coming in you're going to start making changes and you're going to start i think being more self-sufficient so i i do feel some of you will decide to go on your own and you'll decide to make sure that you can stand on your own two feet before you run you know what i mean so you're definitely going to be i am very centered I am in my zone here and I am walking into something that feels right for me. I do see a lot of you will be creative and you probably have either a side gig or something like that that you actually take on um, just to sort of push yourself 
really but there's so much wisdom here you are going to grow in so much wisdom you're going to have so much knowledge not just about yourself but about others and also this is going to be really helpful for your career because I do feel that it's going to be either painting the lives of people or helping people or doing something like that that is really key to your expansion and key to your growth as an individual but I really hope this helped you group one I am sorry about the blip in the middle it happens sometimes and until I get my big rig sorted out you may experience this now and again but I do apologize and I thank you so much for bearing with me in the meantime I wish you all the very best of luck if you'd like a reading anything from a three card reading to the 2020 year ahead personalized reading is all linked down below ready for you to check out if you are interested in the meantime I wish you the very best of luck leave a comment down below let me know how things go for you and I'm now going to move on to group two Hello group two, welcome. So let's have a look and see. You would have chosen the red jasper and um, this is normally to do with the root chakra so it could be that you're being attracted to grounding yourself, making sure that you are digging deep into the earth and making you know, yourself kind of aware of what your core needs are and what you really want to achieve over the next decade. So we're gonna start with your tarot cards first and I will be drawing some clarifiers later so the first one we have is the destiny card and then we have oh two eights trapped in fear and power okay so that is already speaking to me which is great um like i say these are the new deck that i got for christmas and they're already telling me everything i need to know um because they're that powerful and that connective so that's really nice um so basically there could be a fear that you have which is again a core thing you read um red jasper root chakra it could be that you're too afraid of stepping up into your power and answering the call of destiny now the call of destiny can be different for many different people um and it is actually but it depends on what your blueprint of destiny is if you want to be a millionaire if you want to be a self-sufficient person if you want to help the environment or become a, a speaker or whatever it is you want, whatever your version of power, destiny, success is, this is kind of telling you there's a block to you stepping up and going into that. Now, I do see that even without that here, you would have a pretty damn good year. Well, 10 years. And I feel as though, as I'm looking at these cards, there is a semblance of transformation, but there may be I don't think this is um, telling you this is definitely going to be in all your 10 years, the next decade, is you trapped in fear. Some of you are fearful of change. Some of you are fearful of making a difference, making that, stepping up into your power in order to create your destiny. Some of you are afraid of the power you hold. You know, you've never really tapped into it or maybe you saw a slither of it and now it's like, wow, I did not know I was that powerful, now I'm scared. Because power in the world seems to be owned by people who either work hard for it, who deserve it more than you do, you know, deserve it more than you do. Um, all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of like the, I am not worthy of this power that I have been bestowed. That's a crock. <laughs> That's not correct. That is not correct. Um, this is basically to do with the inner power that you hold is from generations past. It's not just from you, you know, oh, I'm strong or, oh, I can handle this or, or whatever. You have a lot of power. You have a lot of manifestation power. You have a lot of staying power, endurance. This is about encouragement. Um, this is about having that connection to your higher self, to the place that you feel happiest as well there's such a glorious connection coming in here that I'm really pleased that you got this actually because a lot of this could be to do with having the fear of the last 10 years as you know the things that went wrong and focusing on the things that didn't go so well and focusing on the things that you maybe didn't accomplish by the time 2020 rolled around that's fine I know it may be disappointing that maybe you didn't get married to have kids whatever didn't get that promotion, didn't get that whirlwind career just yet. But who says 2020 and onwards is not the time for you? Just because you didn't do it by your own personal cutoff date. It could still happen in various different ways. There could be things 
that you find fulfilled in alternative ways. This is what I'm seeing here. So if you haven't, for instance, had a family yet, you could actually fulfill that in different ways than you believed you could. Or if you wanted to reconnect with family, an old flame, something like that, for many reasons, it may not be what's best for you. Or it could be that you do it in a different way that you didn't think was possible because you thought it would be such and such a way, or because it didn't happen such and such a way, you're now fearful that it'll never do it. So that could be something that you're trying to let go of in the next 10 years. But I do see destiny. I'll pick up these cards so you can see them. The destiny card here is such a glorious card. It really is. I mean, this, to me at least, means transformation completely. This is something that feels like it's overcoming everything just to fulfill your destiny. Because... You know, this woman is going through all these different cycles. This is basically the wheel. This is the wheel of fortune in normal tarot. But she's kind of awakening. You know, this is the time of your awakening. She has her eyes closed on all these or distracted. Now you're focused. You're awakening to your destiny, to your heart chakra, to being aware of how you can manage and how you can activate your higher being, your higher purpose. I think there's going to be a, a big spiritual shift for you. Um, and I think it's understanding your manifestation power. Um, the alignment of your chakras is coming up as well. So maybe that is why you chose the red as well. It's something that seems to be enlightened for you. And also it just comes across as being... I wish I could transfer the feeling that I'm getting to all of you, to be honest, because the feeling is of standing straight, poised, head up, chin up, determined and knowing without shadow of a doubt that this is the direction that you're meant to be in. Walking into the room with confidence, with all the manner of I belong here, walking in with the sense of, you know what? I am determined and I am going to do this and nobody can stop me. That is the energy that I'm getting from that. Obviously the strength card as well. You could be transferring this and transforming into your um, the biggest, biggest qualities of your astrological chart. So it could be that you have Leo in there or it could be that you have you know, various strength points within your chart and this is how you're going to go into these strengths you're going to be assuming your leadership and power this is really good to see so where may you be the <laughs> you know what i was going to say some of you may be scorpio and then i got this one i should have said it um because <laughs> i was thinking like for instance i am a scorpio sun with libra rising and a gemini moon each of those signs have strength so each of your signs in the entire chart will have strength. Your Mercury may be in Gemini, meaning that you can really talk and get your opinion across and really, you know, deliver on how you communicate. It could be various things like that. And then we have the full moon in Scorpio as your biggest connection here. Now, I believe... I haven't got my astrology chart in front of me at the moment, but I believe the full moon in Scorpio will be around May, I think, um, next year. Please do correct me if I'm wrong or um, go look it up and just, just to confirm, don't take my word for it in that one. Um, but this is where you are actually going to connect here and the message of it's time to release negativity. Fear is negative. Fear is telling you you can't. Fear is the lowest frequency. Fear is, well, actually hate is the lowest. But um, fear is where you kind of interconnect with the doubt, with the ego telling you no, with the issues that come forward. So this is saying you are going to release negativity in the next decade. You are going to transform into a very positive person. But I also feel like everything you want is coming to you. Now, I know that can sound scary. And I know sometimes it can even sound beyond limitation, really. <laughs> like at everything, like a million dollars. Yeah, why not? It's something that seems to be coming in where you can have a happy life. If what you want to be is happy, if you want to want to be is positive, release negativity. That's the first step. I want to be happy, but just, you know, chop that butt off. <laughs> you know, like it's a dead twig on a tree that's bringing down the rest of the tree from growing. You chop it off. 
release that negativity because that's not something that you need to hold on to, is it? You don't need to hold on to the thought processes, the patterns, the things that you've been taught over the last however many years you've been alive that you do not deserve because of X, Y, Z. That is not how it works. I'm going to actually move on to your romance cards now. So these are not just romance, they're actually also relationships within your life. So let's see. Religious factors. Okay, so your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing, spiritual path. So like I say, your processes, your belief systems, if you're one of those who needs to repent all the time, um, you know, maybe see where that is coming from. But as I said before, I do think that you are evolving in your spirituality, you're becoming really powerful. So that could be how you draw in your loved ones, how you kind of evolve with your loved ones as well through your spirituality and you'll start to see it and then chemistry there's a song, strong magnetic attraction here and it could be that you do literally attract them in so it's something that you're like I want to attract these people I want to attract the love of my life I want to attract the perfect partner for me or the partner that will complement my being and the way I am and having things that really do enforce me there could be something here and I do think that a few of you are there's a theme coming through group one or very much about their spirituality and maybe even changing religion for you I feel like through spirituality and through understanding that manifestation is real and you know thought processes and vibrations and stuff like that I think actually you're going to remove fear from your life um, and that's going to really shift and take a different direction for you but let's have a look at your cards oh two ones so princess of wands and the seven of wands now the princess of wands is normally the page so this brings forward messages you know this is normally a younger person it could be a fire sign aries leo sagittarius but they sh should play a big factor for you in the next decade i also feel here the seven of wands just pop her down for a sec. Um, seven of Wands is about persistence. So if anything, if anything is trying to push you backwards, if anything is trying to um, take precedence over your confidence, if anything is trying to back you into a corner, this is you defending your throne, so to speak. This is you saying, you know what, no. I'm fighting back. It could be fighting anxiety, fighting depression, fighting thought processes that you have always had. People who want to enforce that negativity around you. Why are you doing that? You'll never do that. Fight that. <laughs> you know, you don't literally have to fistic off them. But you can make sure that you rise above it and say, no, I'm not stooping to your level. I'm going to do that. And I do see that some of you, I see some of you have powerful business owners, like really powerful in, in the zone business owners, matriarchal, patriarchal, very strong, like, uh, no, you're not moving me. But you're operating from a place of love. You're operating from this place of understanding. And this is a case of messages that are lifting, messages that are going to come forward and give you energy so you can seek, so you can find, so you can actually deliver on things. I mean, the message of the prince or page <laughs> of ones is be creative, be enthusiastic, confident, carefree courageous all the seats <laughs> you know it's something that you need to do there's messages coming through here to invite you there's opportunity over the next 10 years to evolve and to take challenges on and to knock those challenges out of the park i don't see you faltering i don't see you um kowtowing and shrinking inwards as this may have some of you believe don't focus on that card. In fact, let's just do that for a second. How does the spread feel now? If you remove fear from your life, how does this spread look? This spread looks amazing to me. Um, so it's destiny. You're going to have this turning point in your life. You are going to fulfill a lot of stuff. And I think this could be in the next five to seven years. I see sunny times, perfect views for you something about being very visual for you i see things really lifting creativity 
and you maybe there's something that you feel channeled to do I don't know what it is but there's something that's definitely calling on you you will be challenged not just by people around you but also by circumstances the world situation there will be challenges everybody every single group that I'm reading for will have challenges but you're powerful enough to overcome that and you're releasing fear you're releasing fear this next 10 years you're changing your thought processes your thought patterns it feels like you are attracting things not just people things into your life I feel like you're going to be wanting to do more rather than have more like experiences rather than owning stuff like you can have 10 Lamborghinis but if you don't drive them what's the point you know it's not the thought of owning it's the thought of experiencing and I think that's actually um that's already a message coming in for group three too actually um but that's something that I think is coming through for you is as well even though you will be in a position to buy you're going to be in a position to buy, to own, to have. You can own your own home, fine. Um, but I do feel that in the next 10 years, you're going to be learning that actually I want to experience and I want to explore and see what this world has to offer and what I have to offer the world as well. I hope that really helped you, my gorgeous group twos. Do let me know in the comments below how this reading resonated with you. And if you'd like any reading from a 2020 forecast onwards to any other reading, do click in the description box below if you are interested. I'll just leave that down there. But thank you so much for contacting, well, not contacting me. I'm <laughs> already preempting people contacting me. Um, but thank you so much for being here. I love reading for you guys. And I'm really hoping to continue this journey with you guys 2020 and beyond. Take care. And I'm now going to move on to group three. Hello my beautiful group threes. So you would have chosen the Charoite, which is actually a very powerful psychic stone. Um, this was, I bought this in New Zealand after um, one of the psychics advised me to get one and then everything transformed from there. So if you want transformation in the next decade, if you want certain, um, you know, understandings to come through, I think that's the perfect one for you. So let's have a look at your tarot cards first. Ooh. Not you, I'll do you last. You've got three. Mm. Okay. Let's see what's coming through for you with this John Holland Tarot. I've said before, I've shuffled a lot with these. Um, so if you get like a sequence of numbers, that seems to be what's coming through for you. It's not a case though, I haven't shuffled enough. I've shuffled several times. Ooh, Crown Chakra. So that's also associated with Charolite. You have... Third eye chakra, what I was just saying. So again, third eye crown, very associated with charoite. Oh well, okay, so I didn't even know that this was a sequence, but you have one. Um, this is a throat chakra. I think group two so far has not had a sequence. Um, so you seem to be very strong here. Um, let me just have a look. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm getting some information about them, but I just want to make sure with some more tarot cards. So it is just going to be a little bit of a blip while I do that. Along with the cards, I actually got this gorgeous um, purple velvet pouch to go with the purple at the back of the cards. Um, so I keep them in there now. But I just want to see, whoa, what does group three have? These are very active today. I don't know why. I just want to know, I am doing this on New Year's Eve though, so maybe there's a lot going on. I just want to know what group three, clarify what's coming through with these particular chakras. What messages do you want to give regarding these chakras to group threes? Yours has the potential to be a long reading, I'm just telling you now. Okay. Okay, for some reason I want to transfer those. And then that's, yeah, okay. So universe, wow. So you have the universe for your throat chakra. Speak your intention. That's what just came through, through to me. Speak your intention. Your words hold power. Yeah, your words hold power. And I feel like um, <clears throat> and my throat chakra itself just decided to close. So that could be a message to you. Make sure that you're speaking your intentions here. Make sure that you are um, holding power in your words because 
the words that you say to yourself are as powerful as the words you say to others. So for instance, I'm no good, I'm not this, I'm not that. In the next decade, it feels very important that you learn the power of speech, the power of how you can talk to yourself and how you can build yourself up as well as build up others. So the third eye, moving on, you're going to be able to see the key times as to when you need to move forwards. I think you're going to be shifting forwards from a very difficult situation um, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, especially mentally with these. I see you shifting. I see you maneuvering yourself into something that's more heart-based, something that's more I think maybe outer stresses have really played a number on you. And this is kind of now, I'm leaving all that stress behind. I'm not actually going to focus on that anymore. And you're going to be, there's a lot of blue here. So I feel like there's a lot of communications, how you speak and how many people you speak to is going to reduce, but not like um, a socially thing, you know, like if you're a socialite and you want to meet everybody, you know, it could be that you just kind of reduce the amount of circles you're in. But it's, I get Aquarius energy here, air sign energy. So if you're with a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of acquaintances, you're going to want to focus more on the friendships, the key important people in your life, the friends that you can count on, the people who you would go to in a time of crisis if you would lay down heaven and earth to help them. That is somebody that you need to focus on in the next decade. Not all this kind of look at me, I'm socially blah, blah, blah. It's what you want to be, who you want to be, the person who actually comes forward. You're going to be able to see problems before they arise in the next decade because your wisdom is um, refining itself. You're also going to be focusing on the times that matter rather than the times that don't. So, for instance, the times that matter are the small things, the conversations, the laughter, the moments of downtime, rather than the parties and the things and the this and the extravagance. There's a kind of a balance that's coming in here. So maybe you are a Libra who likes the um, extravagant things or you have Libra in your chart, but there's definitely an even keel coming in for you and I do believe that there's an um, an excellent point that's coming to mind in regards to making do with what you have so it's a case of what you have already is probably enough to do something with so just kind of be grateful write a gratitude diary and then incorporate other things that you'd like to draw into your life but make sure it's quality and not quantity that's what's coming through for that and then we have awareness wow so you have the magician too this is almost like a um uh, bookends that's, that's what I'm trying almost like bookends here and again lots of blue but the crown chakra here as well he has the crown chakra in lit here this is very much about focusing on your connection to the universe so connect your crown chakra with the throat it could be actually that you're um, wanting to become a, a psychic or develop those gifts um, You've got a lot of power coming in here. The main thing that I'm seeing is there's a lot of development. Your life doesn't change, your life doesn't stay the same, sorry, for very long. It's something that seems like you are tapping into a power that maybe your ancestors had or somebody, you know, previously in your family have had. You're very interested in the history of your family or you will become very interested in the history of your family as well. This is going to affect everything within your life this is going to affect um people your career almost for some of you now i'm not saying this is all of you who have chosen this so please if this doesn't resonate please disregard it um but for some of you i see you going almost nomadic like you just <laughs> you're just gonna set away everything and just kind of go traveling you're just going to you know get, give away this fine things and just you know, you may have a flat or a house that you return to, but for the most part, you're just going to live very simply and focus on the simplicity because it seems like the busyness of your brain, the busyness and that multiple firing of ideas and stuff, it's all just going to kind of reduce into a nice, simple area where you can just kind of breathe and kind of commune with nature. Now, I would say do not forget that your other chakras are there. 
don't forget that your heart chakra is very important your solar plexus is as well your sacral and your root so as much as you focus on the psychic ability that you have and i'm talking to any pisces as well especially who are um you know looking at this reading as well but i do think that just focus on you know balancing everything but there may be a deep development that you're doing you're going to be very in tune with people and in tune i'm just channeling this i'm not even looking at the cards anymore um you're going to be very in tune with the people you're going to be in tune with the world you're going to start seeing things through the eyes of a very sympathetic person i think you're going to be focused on animals nature the cause humanitarian causes you're going to also be focused on how you can help other people and that's what's going to teach you how to work in with your friendship circle that you already have who you're holding on to unnecessarily who you are needing to get rid of not necessarily get rid of but just weed out of your life those who are take 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 and don't give back so there's a lot going on in your life in the next 10 years. I feel it's freeing, it's liberating. It's something that you feel, hooray, I don't need things. I don't need things, I'm not attached to it anymore. This could actually be a universal shift because somebody else got this as well. Um, but this is something that just feels like you are free. You're freeing yourself. I do apologise, in the course of that somebody came to the door. Um that new year's eve wishes you know um but okay so you have the new moon in scorpio and this is actually for, for a second now i thought hang on a second this is the same card as the last reading because they had full moon in scorpio but you have new moon in scorpio which is basically working through your fears now interestingly enough the last reading had um very much a case of uh fear based stuff that was the uh fly in the ointment shall i say there was a fly in the ointment that there was fear going on they had to let go so this is kind of telling you a little bit of the similar thing but it's making a promise to yourself just to feel the fear and do it anyway don't let things kind of push you to one side because you worry about oh it's not going to work or you worry that things are going to happen or anxiety and stuff there are many different ways that you can ease these chakras which are mostly mental so you could go to therapy if you needed to. You could work with those individuals that could help you understand how things are working for you or not working. And I feel like the new moon in Scorpio is in actually November. So it could be that the November times, you could be a Scorpio yourself, but November through the next 10 years could be a point where you start to see these changes. You start to see alterations within yourself and your actual spirituality so that could be quite interesting to see actually just going to look at your romance well it's not just romance i have to specify it's also to do with your kind of relationships on all levels true love oh this is the romance of a lifetime could be past life karma coming in with that one you've also got trust ah that could also be why you're narrowing down your social circles here because this situation is calling you for you to have faith so trust people trusting people that you have in your life is imperative if you don't feel that you can trust anybody why have them you know only trust the people that you keep in your circle you know i think that or to trust the people you have in your circle because there's going to be a kind of an expansion of that and understanding what trust means to you would you trust them with your life or is it just with your dog you know there's something that needs to be kind of defined i also see here let your friends help you okay so again ask for and accept support from others this is going to be um have, having a found family almost your clan your people you're going to start seeing and finding the people that mean a lot to you you're going to define what you want in friendships what you want in relationships you're going to enhance the good friendships the good relationships that you already have and you're going to be finding others to kind of not replace but what i'm seeing a lot of recently is people shrinking down their social circles um in general but it seems to be enhanced for you and then they can expand each time they find somebody who matches their energy and vibration so that i think is going to come in you, you are going to have true love in the next 10 years or enhance the love that you've already experienced or are experiencing and i do feel that this is coming from a place of soul coming from a place of laughter joy it just really honestly feels 
expanse expansion um while also remaining simple oh they don't really like giving me convoluted messages i tell you what right so let's have a look at what your other tarot cards are you have three here so you have justice so again balance if you are Libra, please let me know because there's a lot of Libra things that are coming to mind here. You could be getting um, social justice. You may be, you know, using your voice for a cause. Like I was mentioning before, you could be looking into doing something like that, changing careers to be a voice for people who don't have one. You know, it could be something there. Prince of Wands. So Prince of Wands is very much charming, self-confident, um, daring and adventurous. So again, it could be that you're like, you know what, I'm just going to be going off nomadic lifestyle. I'm going to be traveling. You could be moving to a new country in the next 10 years as well. You could be moving completely. Um, some of you anyway. You want to call another place your home that's coming through. Maybe the mid-year point, you know, the five years you want to call another place your home. You don't want to stay in the same area, whether that's politically charged reasons or whether that's just because you don't feel in your soul that you are in the right place anymore. You're going to be moving. Oh, and then you have the Prince of Swords. So Prince of Swords here is very direct, authoritative. Um, I feel also knowledgeable because it's almost like a learned person. You've matured, you've consumed books you may be going back to education in the earlier the first three years they just said first three years of the next decade you could choose to go back into education to learn something um and then actually you evolve and you get this logical knowledgeable element that you can implement so it could be that you are arming yourself you're arming yourself with knowledge these next 10 years and you're actually going to be better for it it may be a little bit of a rocky road at first one or two and going into year three is absolutely fine. Astrologically, um, 2020 is a little bit rocky. Then 21, 22, 23, I believe, is absolutely fine. Um, so that seems to be <laughs> the transitional phase that we're going into now. But honestly, it feels so nice, so freeing. You're going to be so aware of things. And at first it may, you know, take you off guard, but I think then you're just going to be a very learned, wise, carefree person who is fighting for people, maybe just closer to home, but giving people a voice and giving things a voice and you're going to find a cause and also an awareness of using that crown chakra and downloading information from the universe to use as your free will. But I hope this really helped you. Do let me know in the comments below if the, any of this resonated with you. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for being with me over the last year. And also, if you're interested in getting a reading from me, I'll leave the links down below for 2020 readings and such. But in the meantime, best of luck. I wish you all the very best. Sending you love. And now going into group four. Hello, lovely group fours. Now, you would have chosen the, the Labradorite. Um, but as if you if you work with crystals before, you probably know this. I put it down on the side. The rest, with the rest of the other choices, the labradorite is gone. Now I don't know why it was on the shelf. I didn't move it. <laughs> I didn't do anything while I was doing these readings. It's just disappeared. So I'm very sorry that I can't hold it up and show it to you. But it'll come back when it wants to. It happens a lot of the time with various other crystals. So I do apologise. But if you did choose the Labradorite, the Labradorite if I can speak. Um, if you did choose that, then this is to do with your psychic intuition and understanding. And that actually does seem to be a theme. It seems like we're all awakening. So I'm going to start with your tarot cards. With the John Holland deck. Now I have mentioned before, if you have a sequence... This could be because um, they just wanted to come out for you. I've shuffled the deck a humongous times um, since I got it at Christmas. Um, and it always seems to be correct. So, ooh. Conflict and defeat. I feel instinctively that you're going towards the light. Now, let me just... Ironically, because we're losing light rapidly here. Um, I'll leave this little candle so you can see it a bit more. Now, here, the conflict and defeat, it seems like you are running towards this light. You're running to the light in your life instead of going into the darkness into wherever anyone else might be um you know running to they're kind of i don't know it's almost like you're seeking a light in the dark and i actually feel the next decade is going to be that light in the dark for you 
You have three, emotional loss. So you're healing anything that you have suffered in the last, I'd say five years. It just doesn't feel like it's just one instance for you. There's a lot that you've grieved for. There's a lot of things that you've maybe sacrificed in order to get to the place that you are now. And then we have rest and rejuvenate. This is what it's all about. Resting and rejuvenating the mind, the heart, the soul. You're definitely, I mean, you have two swords here and you also have cups. So it feels like um, this is to do with how you're interacting with your emotional change. If you've been through trauma, if you've been through a loss, if you've been through anything like that, you're naturally going to evolve past it or incorporate it into your life somehow. The knowledge as to how things worked out for you or didn't work out, the emotional defeats that you felt maybe from relationships, friendships, you know, the end, and you feel hurt by them. But you're not going to be defined, I'm just going to move that out of the way of the, <laughs> of the background there, but you're not going to be defined by everything that's happened. This is just kind of a thing that this is what you're healing from. I may actually draw some more cards for you, just to clarify. But this is something that you're actually moving out of, not going into. And I'm not just saying that because you probably don't want to see that for the next 10 years. But this is kind of a culmination of everything and I'm doing this on New Year's Eve as well so this could be the main feeling for you is that this is just like everything that you've currently got on your shoulders New Year's Eve 2019 or even you know the time that you because this is technically a timeless video so anything that you feel when you're watching this video and like oh please let it get better please let the next decade get better I just I can't please just let the decade get better. This is telling you it will. You have rest and rejuvenation to come. I think this is the next two years, two to three years. The emotional loss that you've experienced is going to affect your heart chakra. It always will. It's always going to kind of impact you in that way. So I think you're going to be healing that by looking at other people, but not using them in order to help you heal, like not seeking other relationships so you don't feel alone. You're not going to be doing that. This is going to be understanding that you do feel um, lost and you do feel maybe lonely sometimes, even if even if you're with somebody. But this is you understanding that and not really giving in to any conflict and defeat that you've experienced. And I'm just going to use the same deck just to clarify. They already say the top card that I just put down. And you okay so yeah there we go light i just said to you didn't i you're going towards the light and this is definitely a theme coming in for you so you're moving towards the light now you're getting a chance to shine as well it's almost like you are drawing something down towards you I do feel, you know, this is normally the star in the Major Arcana. So I do feel that this is kind of telling you the universe has your back. Sorry, the sun. Same thing. <laughs> the universe has your back. It's like happiness, contentment. It's like a integral part of you is to seek the sun. Maybe you're going to a lighter place. Maybe you're going to move. Um, I can't see if every single person, but I do get the impression though that you're seeking more happiness. You're seeking more delight actually this is a great thing this is you're going to start feeling freer than you have in a while you're going to start experiencing things in a much lighter honest way you're going to be being more carefree maybe even able to afford the things that you want like a little tea set or something that you've had your eye on for a while you're going to take not um to be kind of very materialistic but you're going to take on board some things that you feel quite content with like, oh, and breathe in and you feel very connective and you feel very open with that. And you feel like, oh, okay, cool, I can do this. It's very much a light-centered time. Ooh, interestingly, another one had the Destiny card. I can't remember whether it was group two or three. I believe it was two. But you have the Wheel of Fortune here, so another major arcana. This is a turning point now. And interestingly enough, she's got her hands over her heart. And so has he. I don't know if you can see that they both got their hands over the heart this is you awakening to understanding that the emotional loss does not define you that you can heal and that it's going to be a turning point for you when you do heal i see you growing i see you evolving and i see you becoming something incredibly special 
And then you have power, which also came up in a similar reading. So maybe two and four, you guys are kind of experiencing similar things, except you feel more like your energy needs a lift. Um, so I do feel in the next 10 years, you're going to step into power. You're going to find that light within yourself and you're going to step into power. You're not going to have much darkness anymore. You're not going to have much downtrodden thoughts. I see you expanding, experiencing and actually believing in yourself a lot more. Believing that you're capable of doing things because if you can go through that, you can go through anything. So your confidence is going to define you in the next 10 years. For the you, I feel this, the feeling is dominate and confidence. Those are the two words that are coming up, dominate and confidence. You're going to be dominating your life in, you know, doing things with purpose and you're also going to be very confident about the way that you are doing that as well so let me just see what the immunology card is Ooh, luck is on your side wheel of fortune not literally meaning taking a gamble but just shooting your shot you know confidence have confidence to shoot your shot to let things go now the new moon in Sagittarius is in December so it could be December just gone or the December that's coming through every single year in the decade. But Sagittarius energy is just saying, take a little bit of a shot at it, you know? Aim true. The heart demands, the heart is an arrow, it demands to aim true or something like that. You know, it feels like you're trying your best to aim at something in particular. Maybe this is love you want. You want, you know, to be shot with Cupid's bow and to be, you know, in love and stuff. Like that. But I think it's defining to say I want to be in a you know matching relationship not just I want to be in love because that could cause some <laughs> cause some things going on so I do feel like you know you are learning you are going to just have the ability to take a risk now again take a punt at it you know you may think what have I got to lose and a lot of your experiences are going to be through that Sagittarius energy if you continue to go you know what let's let me throw my hat in the ring here yeah let's see you're not going to be worried about being defeated you're not going to worry about what it may cost you because you're saying you know what I can get through this I'm not going to get if I don't try and you're going to be trying different things you're going to be trying different solutions to problems that maybe you didn't even know you had until they actually came through um, because a lot of this philosophy you're going to be kind of you know what life for living or you know those cheesy quotes or even something more pure than that it just feels a lot better a lot more content really so these are your romance cards, although I am using them for all relationships. Okay, so this is something that you are letting go of because they're not coming in. This is unrequited love and codependency. So it feels like you're going to recognize when there is not enough attraction or chemistry. What was I just saying, actually? You know, I just want to be in love. Okay, well, do you want the right person or you just want a person? This is the thing that you need to, I think, a lot of you are very hearty romantics. Not all of you, but a lot of you are very hearty romantics. And you're just like, oh, I really want somebody to fulfill me and validate me. Validate yourself. You are valid. You are very much a lovable human being. But you know, you just need to take a risk on some love, some loss, some things. You know, it's just a case of you understanding what is worth the risk and what isn't. And I feel like unrequited love, codependency you know, needing this, I need it, I need it, I need it. No. What the universe needs you to do is to seek that light, is to seek that light within yourself, shine that bright, and then you will attract the people who are meant to be in your life. This goes from friends as well. Maybe you're desperate to be friends with a certain person, and they just, for whatever reason, they just don't want to know. You're probably better off without them, to be honest. If they are not matching your attempts at friendship, if they don't care, there's absolutely no reason that you should bend over backwards to try and be a friend and that's I think something that is also a theme for you it's kind of you're coming into your power you're, you're stepping up I see a lot of Virgo sensitive Cancerians energy coming in here maybe a little Libra but something that you know could be a romantic notion that you're kind of maybe naive in a few things and I don't mean that in a bad way there are some things I'm naive about everybody is naive about something because they haven't experienced it or they have a particular view of it based on media or something so it could be that you have an idealistic view of something and that has been kind of shattered recently or something that you oh it's not how I thought it was going to be 
this is you picking up those pieces this is you learning growing evolving and absolutely being a better person for it and the last two tarot cards are five of wands and four of cups so again four of cups you've got that twice so this is definitely rest and recuperation over the next 10 years but i do feel the first three are integral for this so this is something that you know any conflict any oh they just said too many people are in your life telling you what to do too many opinions too many cooks spoiling this broth you need to get rid of them I think that you're going to start making a name for yourself on your own. You're not going to be codependent anymore. You're not going to be somebody who, you know, does yes sir, no sir. So you're back school sir. You're actually going to be more forceful and go into this with your head held high. You're going to be quite strong and you're going to be purposeful. And again, confidence, something about confidence is coming through here. I feel a lot of you are very great healers. A lot of you, that's why you're sensitive, you're empaths. You are people who want to do things for people. You are people who want to help people and give everything to them if you need to. But reserve something for yourself, recuperate, rejuvenate, just rest, understand and realign. Actually, they're saying realign. They don't want you to give everything to people who are undeserving. And, you know, you may say, well, they do deserve it because I love them. But have they earned that love? It's different if it's family, I suppose, because you are kind of talked into, I suppose. Um, you have to love family. Not if family treats you like the scum of the earth. Not if family treats you like you are lesser than. Not if family damages you. You need to learn to forgive yourself for loving people who may not love you back, as in family, as in friends, and then realign yourself to see if there's any way that you can overcome those. You will overcome it, I see that here. Chalk and cheese, to be honest. Three major arcanas, as soon as you overcome emotional loss, you see the defeat as being um, one that's actually turned you towards something better, and you rest and rejuvenate. This is what you have. You have light, destiny, power. You are powerful. You have your destiny at your fingertips and you are lighting the way. Because this is all lesson based. So I think you've got some karmic times coming through. Again, they keep saying four to five years. <laughs> so I don't know what the rest of the five years are. Um, but it's something that's very key to you for um, the next three to five years, first two, three, very strong rejuvenation for your understanding, kind of like um, the phoenix from the flames. So it's like if you have been burned, if you have been scorned, you're actually being reborn right now. And I just want another card to see, because they said, well, if you don't know what the next five years are going to be like, like years five to 10 or six to 10, get another card. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Awareness. This has come out a lot. So you can, I think this is uh, everyone awakening dawn of the age of Aquarius or something. But this is awareness. We are going into a higher state of awareness. And after this, you're kind of tying loose threads, loose ends. You are going to be amazing, my friends. You are going to absolutely dominate and be very special in this world. What is it? I think that the kindest people are often the ones that have hurt the most and the softest people are the ones that have had really hard times this is going to be you but you're not going to let that be soft to the point of everyone trampling over you you're dominating you're growing you're expanding and you're punchiness in the gut so i hope that helps you <laughs> let me know in the comments below how this goes for you do let me know and if you'd like a reading all the information i've linked, left in the link below like 2020 and stuff like that for you but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the very best of luck, sending you lots of love, healing and gratitude for the rest of the year and onwards. And I'll speak to you guys very, very soon.